This is the love story of Dr. Deborah Malfi and Sven van der Heiden. In their own words, how and where did they meet? We met through Tinder uh, during COVID time. And yeah, and we had planned uh, our first date. We had planned to go either for a walk or somewhere because we couldn't really go to a restaurant or anywhere else. And then the almighty Dutch weather, of course, surprised us and it, it was raining. So uh, eventually we changed plans and I came to his house and we had some food and some drinks, talks, and uh, yeah, it went very well and uh, here we are. She still is. Actually, she was <laughs> sitting right here when I was sitting on this couch for the very first time, the very yeah. first date, and um, I think she never left. <laughs> Apparently, she's still on the same couch. I trusted him so much, I think, because, yeah, going to somebody's house, a stranger's house you've never met before. But, of course, before that, we, we, chat, we were chatting a bit, we exchanged quite a lot of information, um, and also we kind of got to know each other a little bit, and I felt, well, he could be trusted. Apparently. But, uh, so we are a successful, <laughs> successful Tinder match up, yeah. to, up to today. Hey, Tinder should use us for a commercial. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> Tinder, hi. <laughs> Why did they swipe right? Well, of course, her beautiful smile and uh, the attractiveness is an important part of where people, uh, why people choose to swipe left or right. But there's a, there's a limited amount of information, the name, the age, and, uh, and, and there's some free text field. And there were some big red crosses in there. And <laughs> no games and um, yeah, basically I don't no want nudes. just a, yeah, don't ask for nudes. Uh, don't, don't ask for nude pictures. And yeah, I thought, okay, did, to put that out there that uh, strongly makes me think you're serious. And I was looking for a serious relationship and not for a date for a night or just for fun. You should have seen his Tinder picture. He looked so cute. <laughs> he looked like a really nice guy. He was raising a wine glass at his friend's wedding, I guess. So he was all suited up. He looked very sharp, very neat and all cute and raising his glass. So I kind of looked at the picture and I was like, he seems like a fun guy and who wine? Of course. It was the wine who did wine. it. I was like, okay. Yeah. He likes wine. <laughs> yeah. I like wine. Yeah, yeah so then I thought, you know what? Let me let me uh, see what he's about, and yeah. So I guess I met the right choice, and it's actually surprising because ever since I joined Tinder, I only like went on one date before, and then I met him, and I was like, "Whew! Thank God I don't have to go through this for so long." I'm done. How was the first date? We were first chatting on the Tinder chat, and then it evolved to okay, we exchanged numbers, and we went on WhatsApp, and. It's uh, how you talk to each other. It was respectful, but also very kind. And it kind of made me feel like I could trust him. I felt, well, let's try. If I don't take a risk, well, we won't find out how this goes. And I'm glad I did. So yeah, the first date was really nice. We ended up, there was a curfew. Everybody needed to be home at 10. But we got along so well. And of course there was the wine and Next time we checked the clock, it was already past midnight. So I couldn't leave. And yeah, so I spent the night in his guest room. And, but I, in the middle of the night, I was coming, teasing him and then running away to the guest bedroom. I slept and yeah, and it kept happening the second date as well. I slept in the guest bedroom because of this bloody curfew. And yeah, it went on and on. And after one month, we were like officially in a relationship because we spent so much time together. Um, but I did need to put my best efforts in to make her feel trusted and like, yeah, if you don't feel like this, if you want to meet somewhere else or you want to postpone the date because we can't walk outside, just give her all the space and all the room. And I, I think the fact that she gave me that trust, that, that is a very good start for any relationship because it, yeah, it bonds immediately. And you know, even though we, we over we went over the curfew and she stayed the night. You, you stay a gentleman and, and you get a <laughs> you get a nice uh, trustful girl back. In, in, yeah. So we watch for it. I would. Say. How do they handle the challenges of being two people from two different cultures and continents? There's a bit of exposure from both sides. Like he's exposed to people of my culture. I'm exposed to people of his culture already. So I think it was kind of. The basics were already there. We kind of already knew 
what matters to me, what matters to him. But of course, we keep teaching each other every other day because sometimes I might do something that might come off offensive to him or vice versa. And we make it a point to correct each other at that moment, exact at that moment. If you say something that really doesn't sit right or this and that, we, yeah. we tell each other Call that this doesn't feel, uh, it's not okay to me or to him and yeah. And, but those are just normal things that happen with every, every relationship anyways. Um, yeah, but there are other differences, but they are quite minor, minor and I, food for example, like I do my, I do my organs for me, it's my firigisi, yep. my all the stuff, not he does, me. he doesn't. I tried it stuff. though, I tried it and it, it's, it's not bad, but it is not of my liking. Luckily I'm very diverse in which food I like and I'm not mm. eating the regular Dutch meals very often, much to Deborah's liking because she likes the spice food a little bit more than the blunt Dutch food, <laughs> which I agree to. Um, Dutch food can be a bit blunt and I'm happy to get uh, to, to learn new dishes. Like uh, I, I love japatis with uh, coconut beans, coconut veggies for I example. I converted him. He never used to like beans before he met me and then I made him coconut beans with japati. I think yeah. that's one of the reasons it why he's marrying me. <laughs> what is wrong with Sven? Why is he dating a black lady? There's absolutely <laughs> nothing wrong with me. People who think there's something wrong with uh, me, those people have an issue. I, I think it doesn't matter if you're, you're a little bit bigger, or you're very small, or you, which skin color you have, it's, it's all fine. You, you, you like a person, and the person is somebody inside. And well, I am blessed with also a very beautiful girlfriend. Fiance, I need to say actually, because we do our, uh, we did get engaged. It's it's the person inside that really counts. The outside, uh, yeah, that's that's a nice bonus. I don't see there's anything wrong with me. It's actually an enrichment to my life. What is wrong with Deborah? Why is she dating a white man? That's a good question. I think that it just so happened that we happen to click, and he happens to be white. It had nothing, I was not, I was not going out there looking specifically for a white man. Yeah, that's you know, also true. That. It's, it just so happened that, yeah, he could have been black and uh, I could have liked to see the picture how he looked like. And if we had a connection, then I'll be sitting here with a black man. Yeah, uh, it, yeah. so it, it, it just so happened that he happened to be the man I fell in love with and he happened to be white. It's actually good that you say it that way because the same goes for me. It, it, but yeah, I'd also had dates and, and previous girlfriends who were white. So it wasn't us looking for a specific type, it is the, the other things that made it click. Yeah, exactly. And that's the things that do matter the most. What have been the reactions of family and friends? At the end of the day, for my family, it's am I, am I happy? And if he makes me happy, it doesn't really, really matter. And uh, yeah, my mom wasn't that surprised because yeah, my other sister is also married to a white man. My other sister is married to an African man. My brother is married to an African woman. So there's, it's, it's mixed here and there. She's, for her, it was more like, as, you, as long as you're happy together, and uh, he's not a drug addict or some uh, weird, uh, weird or shit like that. And, uh, he has, he's stable, he has a job, he's not, uh, yeah, he's respectful and all. You're happy, I'm happy, you know. My friends were quite happy that I met Sven. Made, well, I'm gonna say this, it's not the only reason, but in the beginning, I think he won my friend's hearts with his spare ribs. So the first time he was meeting my friends, uh, like within the first couple of times or so, he made his famous spare ribs. And if you test those ribs, you will understand why I am marrying this guy. <laughs> why she never left. <laughs> Even though it took a while for me to pull up those barriers. But, uh... I'm telling you. So yeah, all my friends, they really, all my friends who've met him, they really like him. And even those who haven't met because I tell them about him, they're like, all right, all right. Yeah, some of them are jealous. Cause yeah, the things he does, that uh, it really shows how thoughtful he is, how I'm a priority in his life. And when I tell these stories, people are like, hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and for the rest, the only questions that were asked are, are you compatible with each other? And that's not because she's black or, or white, it is, do you like the same things? Uh, do you see the future the same? Debbie likes to travel a lot and I like to be with my woman. Uh, is that something you can work with? Which we, we, we talked about a lot and uh, yeah, also it took some adjustment, of course, 
Debbie wants to go to Tanzania a couple times a year to see, uh, to see Mama and the rest of the family and friends. Um, which is something you don't go for three days, like uh, for a weekend. <laughs> that, so that, uh, and maybe some business opportunities that might follow there will take her away uh, weeks or months, uh, which is something I need to get used to. Um, and my solo trips. <laughs> and she wants to go on a solo trip, which as a man I would say for safety reasons I am not too big a fan of, but on the other hand it keeps her sane. And, <laughs> Uh, and I, I will never tell her not to do anything. I can only ask her to think about me also a little bit, about my, uh, I would say, being at ease when she is not here. But it builds her character. Deborah sheds more light into why she travels solo sometimes. As long as I'm an adult, I'm independent, I can, you know, I can finance my, my travel. I don't know if there is anybody to stop me, apart from the visa people, maybe they might, uh, yeah, or my enemies in the village. But, <laughs> but I, I, I feel like, why, why am I not supposed to? Anybody who knows me, they'll definitely tell you, oh, what society thinks, that's not what the borough thinks. I travel alone mainly because in solitude, I find elevation. So I'd rather use that time to really test my character. You meet strangers, you go to different places, you also get to test what you like and what you don't like. And whenever I go to my solo trips, I come back with all these experiences that in my day-to-day -day life, very applicable because I know, okay, now I'm saying no because this is really not what I want. Now I'm saying yes because, okay, I would like to explore, etc., etc. And it saves me a lot of time because it gives me this sort of, I, I don't know if stable is the word, but stable mindset to know what to go for and what not to go for. And sometimes people don't understand me or sometimes people do. Uh, at the end of the day, it doesn't, I'm not really responsible for what other people understand about me as long as it works for me. The bar is a very free spirit. So if any culture or whatever society beliefs are in a certain group of people tell her to not do something she likes she will not follow those society rules Unless and if it's it an African rule <laughs> she will only follow the rules when it benefits her so she will cherry pick this time okay I'm gonna follow African tradition or no this time Dutch tradition because I'm I like the outcome of that tradition or where it brings me so she is a she's a cherry picker when it comes to following rules you are getting married Twice. Why? Yeah. <laughs> well, officially only once. That will be in the Netherlands. But we have the Mahari Day, where I pay the bride's price to her mother. Um, and two days later, we will have a send-off ceremony in uh, in Dar es Salaam, and that we say is the wedding in in uh, Tanzania for some of my friends and, and close uh, family members who are coming from the Netherlands, but also mainly for family members and friends of the Bora who are not able to come to the Netherlands and also to honor the tradition of, uh, of, of the Chaga tribe, which Debbie belongs to. Actually, your mother belongs to, to be uh, correct. And for me, it's important to, uh, to honor the traditional... Uh, He's gonna way. have to do the FIPA style, uh, FIPA tribe uh, uh, <laughs> bride prize tradition. Is not the chaga because you know in the African uh, African culture the man's tribe is what the kids take the husbands the father's tribe so mm -hmm. we are considered FIPA because my dad was FIPA my mom is chaga but because we were exposed more to the chaga side my mom's side than my dad's side we kind of have more chaga traits than FIPA traits but when it comes to the bride prize he will be given a list of items that are related to the FIPA tribe that he needs to present as my bride price. You gotta pay, baby. <laughs> After the Mahari day, and if her mom accepts the bride price, then we consider ourselves officially, well, officially married Mary. to the true uh, to tradition of uh, of Tanzania. Yeah. Which is which is interesting because then our actual marriage date at the certificate in the Netherlands will be the wrong one. Where would the love box be in five years' time? I think there's not a really point where we want to be. We want to have traveled more. We, of course, want to be married. 
Um, we want to figure out if we want to have children together. And for the rest, that, that are all material wishes that yeah, if we, mm. we are, we are uh, blessed to keep our jobs. And if the recession is not going to be that bad, we might want to upgrade our house or all those kind of materialistic things that in the end are far less important than being happy together and share great experiences. Mm, what he said. <laughs> Finally, what would you say to people who might be uncomfortable with your interracial relationship? I think, uh, and I'm going to speak specifically to my fellow African people, because, um, yeah, I think we need to know how to differentiate between Africanism and just social interactions, you know? Uh, and I can understand that we are still uh, bitter and angry about history, the colonial history. And I, I understand all that, uh, but also I think when it comes to uh, social interactions or intimate relationships, etc., um, we should not um, create division there, because this, when we talk about this, we're including love. Love is in the equi equation. And when love is in the equation, why are we creating boundaries with that? While in love is what we need more every day in this world. So where, where there is love, we should nurture that, regardless of color, of gender, whatever. Whatever the difference is in that particular scenario, we should really take that out of the equation because love should be unconditional and we need more of that. So, but then also we should not forget our Africanism in us. I'm an African every day, day in, day out. Oh, yes, you know, yes. like, oh, yes. I know some people can look at me and be like, oh yeah, she's living in the Netherlands and she's dating a white man and she's, you know, she's doing this and that. She's uh, speaking English or blah, blah, blah. Every, all that tied together, but it's, all that is, a, it's, it's a, how should I put it? It does not take away my Africanism. No, you didn't forget I'm your born, roots. I'm born African, yeah, I'm always, always African, I'm African first. You always stay. So I think we should always be able to differentiate that and not use any external factors that, not, that are not African. We should not avoid them from our lives because there's a lot of lessons to be learned around these different interactions that are not really um, the same as or similar to your skin color or your, who you are. So let's keep an open mind. Keep an open mind to take us far. Yeah, and whenever I think, whenever you don't want to be, or you don't like, uh, or you don't, you don't allow people to mix race, I, I think for all those people who think that way, start to learn the people you think should not mix. Because they are persons, they have characters. Mm -hmm. And it's not two skin colors which matter. It's, it's the person behind it. Yeah. And if you don't like somebody because of their skin color, get to learn, learn that person and then decide if you like that person and his character, but not because of how he not or because she looks of the like. color. Yeah. No. Yep. I'm a king. Yes, I'm a king. I think. I'm a king.